you're, you're, anyway. you're, you're at this party and uh, you have to be invited to play by mine just all very yeah and <laughs> so uh, whatever did you know uh, it was Halloween night and, and I was an angel and I was gorgeous Can yeah, I, tell you? I was gorgeous yeah so you were done up like an angel totally right? and you went down to the playboy yep, uh, house of representatives house of representatives yeah <laughs> so uh, how did that go for you it was wild crack and was it all our sort of you know uh, it was all famous celebrities and, uh, Ben Affleck oh, you know everybody Leo yeah, all of them yeah everybody you can mention but this was before they had all real shiny white teeth wasn't it <clears throat> oh, you, know, you know real shiny teeth now everybody has so, so and, annoying and were you chatting to any of these individuals I or? walked in right because they I, made like your accent you know what I mean and listen your old banter, I walked you know, in you right banter, you can banter the bad out, like, you, know, up, no? you know, you can banter. I can't them. get a word in. I can't get a word on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead there. I cannot get a word on. Go ahead there. No, anyway. yeah. Sorry. Uh, welcome, Luella. Jay Hutton. Yeah. Uh, nice to be here, Welcome family. to our, uh, our fourth Small But Massive podcast. Uh, you're the fourth person to turn up in the seat of dreams. <laughs> How does Yay! it feel in the seat of dreams? All it right, it feels amazing. Um, Paddock, y- usually, we usually go at the end of the podcast, like, whoosh, and then you go in and perform <laughs> on the other side. Yes. But t- tonight we've sort of quantum leaped, whoosh, and yeah. we've come back, and you're just after performing there, uh, mm-hmm. and with all the COVID rules and all going on, to a, a small audience. Uh, how mm-hmm. did that uh, feel for you? It felt amazing because it was so nice to actually sing in front of people, even. The, the few people that were in here, but just and uh, but the sound you have in this room is incredible anyway. So it was just a nice, it's a nice good touch. feeling for you. Good a, feeling. a different way, and mm. and the few people were there were really mm. lucky because uh, it was fantastic performance. And all the people out there that follow you online, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to it. And as I say to everyone that comes into the podcast, as soon as they're done, they'll be, all whoosh, be out there <laughs> to the world. All right, is that okay? I'll zoom me up. Uh, and I know you'll be ringing me every day. Well, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? But, they would never do uh, that. Yeah, but you are welcome. And uh, so you are a songwriter. Uh, mm-hmm. You're from Derry City. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'll bring you back to when you were younger. Uh, I suppose at that time when you were younger was would have been the, the height of what was going on in the troubles. unrest in Northern mm-hmm. Ireland. Yeah, the troubles. And uh, so... What got you into music? Was was your family, uh, would there have been plenty of songs and music, you know, like uh, the radio being on and oh. the records have been on and, and what style of records? And sometimes, I know I was the middle of five. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that's five people, that right. is. Oh, okay. <laughs> and a family, right? right? Okay. And so uh, you would have, like I had two older brothers, so obviously they'd have been listening to music and you would just heard records and different things playing mm-hmm. uh, for influences and stuff. But what about yourself when you were going to primary school and stuff? And what was it like then growing up around? Because you just lived right on the edge of the bog side mm-hmm. uh, and the Abercorn Road. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what was that like at that time for you? Well, from a child's perspective, it was it's all relative, like really, but um, it was very exciting. Music, uh, like from a very young age, was was everything in our house. Um, as you know, my big sister Jeanette, who's incredible, was an, a massive inspiration and brought all kinds of music. A massive <laughs> voice. Oh, it's not like a small but massive saying there. She small is small but massive. Uh, she has got, <laughs> and you have it too. Like it's like it must have just come in just from the hey. spirit. Like, whoosh, but our right mommy, your bodies, like, but our mommy and our daddy, like, were especially my mommy. We were well into music, listening to music, radio. You know, we used to listen to Radio Luxembourg out the bedroom window, like, when we were weans. You know, trying to get a signal. Radio uh, Luxembourg. Uh, <laughs> Radio Luxembourg. Yeah, I love that. And that boat, the boat, boat sweet, you totally. lose the signal. Yeah, uh, and, uh, Aren't they all uh, wonder? Um, we're spring Bob Harris. Oh my God, Bob Harris. He was on that boat. Amazing. And uh, was it like just, there was like a, just a bunch of people just went, yep, on the boat. It was so there. magical. Uh, As a child listening, that was so magical. But you had to move around the house to get the no, signal. I'm a, I'm a, aye. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, so what tunes at that time would have been? kicking oh, into your mind at a young age you're a young age it would have been the Everly Brothers and um, like I was always on the real soulful like Aretha Franklin stuff like that dun, 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 dun. Atlantic City Soul classic ah, yeah. stuff all the Motown all that, stuff all that stuff yeah uh, anything, big singers just absolutely and the groove Mm. Yeah. Big bass, totally. Yeah. yeah. Just loved all that. But oh, you bounced around with a hairbrush in the house. No Did comment. Did you do the hairbrush? No comment. Come on. Right. I refuse to maybe, talk about maybe it. Maybe it, was, maybe it was a comb. <laughs> maybe the hairbrush. But who cares? Uh, yeah. No, I was actually singing all my life. Like I, my my first 
live production was <laughs> in a school show in primary school. I was in primary two and I sang, Come, they told me, pum pum pum. The drummer boy. Yes, I was the drummer boy. I bet you your parents were at the front and they were weeping. So hey. proud. That's uh, her we won. That's her we are. My mama was always there for um, everything, everything. The buzz is massive. So massive. The Christmas play sort of thing. Yeah. That yeah. was a start. And uh, had you a few more appearances in the Christmas play? Did you got the ranking? Did you? I, did you get see, the solo one? See, absolutely. I was, the, I was the youngest soloist in our folk group, in the Long Tower folk group, which was, people used to come from all around the place to, to come to 11 o'clock mass. I'm not religious. I don't believe in religion. It has, uh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why my voice went like But the <laughs> crack and the, the, we used to see all the talent you see from the, the chapel, from the, from the, when we were on the altar, we were on the altar so we could see out all, all over the congregation. So would you know who was really praying and who wasn't and who was just there? They I were can't all there. They were all hung over. Who cares? Uh, Nobody was praying anything. Uh, but you, you, you had the love of the folk group. Yeah. And uh, so how many people were in that group? There would have been about fifth. 20 of us, maybe 25, 20 of us. But I was the youngest. Yeah. And um, I had I was the youngest to have a solo. Turn to me, oh man, and be saved. Uh, uh, says the Lord, for I am God. I can see the big, I can see the altar. It's hallelujah. Yes, Praise well, Jesus. Yes, be to you, Ella. Yeah, from the night above. I, I, um, oh, I, I felt safer singing in front of people and felt better. You came alive. Absolutely. Your true spirit was out. Totally. Yeah. And uh, so that would have been a regular thing then. You would mm, have been called absolutely. in, obviously. And then would that have went to like, would it have been like local town concerts at that time? Oh, or? St. Combs Hall. And we did all the show, the Christmas show, Snow White. I was sneezy. <laughs> and then there was My Fair Lady. I was Freddie Ainsford. Would it rain, do you think? Yes, it will rain. <laughs> Do Me you know we on the Mullen? stage at the minute? And I think we should just pull a curtain and just come out. Hello. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm here to save the day. <laughs> and is that something that, uh, you know, uh, the musical theatre part, like, uh, obviously you found your voice along the way or had you always got, you, you, you know, obviously it takes a while for, your, for any singer to get mm. the tone of their voice that they know this is me now and this is where I'm going to sing. Oh, I think it's ever evolving and changing. Yeah. I, but I always loved Entertain. My mommy says the first time she saw me perform on stage was as she was. I reminded her of Danny Kay because I was comical, and I didn't know that. I just I just loved to make people laugh yeah. because it made them feel good. Yeah. And then singing was just mm, whatever. Like so, you don't a wee bit of comedy. You don't a bit. Absolutely, you don't, you don't I love the stage crack. stuff as well. <laughs> just a bit uh, of crack. And uh, what about like uh, fascists and scores? Oh fuck! I did Jesus. you bean them all? Did oh. you bean them out? Did you go through the heats and all? Listen, I did one. I I. Uh, yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, we did it in school. Did your room basically come down with medals and trophies? And yeah. Yeah. I was, I remember go, the first time I was in the fesh, I was um primary six and I was, and it was during the summer. It was a fesh, it was always during the summer. <clears throat> and I had to go up and sing, Be hey, knock them around the Dundee and Clare. Right. Everybody's in their wee fancy dresses and, and I'm mm. up in a pair of shorts and t-shirt and I can see the adjudicators, the three of them. One, the woman in the middle was just laughing, going, <laughs> I did not want to be there. Yeah. Of course I want it. Because you're meant to want it. Because I'm mental. <laughs> and, and did you love it? Oh, hi. Yeah. What a buzz. See, yeah. singing, singing the people was a buzz for me. Yeah, and did you ever, like, uh, like I suppose them times there would have been no busking or anything happening in the streets? Or, or no. Was there any clubs you could go to and sing I was singing, I was doing competitions, like Duffy's Talent Competition or the Giltall Talent Competition, just for experience. Aye. And then I was doing uh, professionally singing when I was about 15 with Noel Ball. We did four or five gigs a week. Well, where was this? In uh, Derry. Uh, who, who's, no, who's the mysterious no, no ball? No ball. He just threw that at me. Like, oh, no, where's no, my no. research? No ball. <laughs> no, no ball. ball. <laughs> no, what does he look like? Has he got black, sneaky hair? Does no, he have a Elvis no. look? You know, is he a young man or is he, no, you know? No, no. Uh, Noel um, saw me singing in a competition and uh, like, he says Noel uh, was a, a, like a, a like he discovered talent yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. was like yeah he, no he was he was part of it yeah and uh, how did it, how did it all go with Noel there, like he, I remember he had a Skoda <laughs> a big Skoda <laughs> and never let us down and we uh, sat there this big massive PA you know them days like yeah. we're talking like 30 years ago yeah, 35 you're, years you're, you're 14 Huge. foot PA there was only 100 <laughs> watt each side I know I know, I know. <laughs> I'm only dragging it <laughs> you doing 4 or 5 gigs a week I was uh, you would I, have to be like a bodybuilder to oh, pull it. and did you have to roadie too then absolutely to get in there roadie yeah. away but it was and, the best and experience. was this in local like say for instance local to lo bars totally uh, and other towns or just uh, outside yeah. yep and totally. would that have been your first time sort of gigging outside and Derry? making money to absolutely yeah, yeah. And having then, a ball 
and you realise then, yeah, I can start to make money now, and this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you had five of them dates, and so you then what I suppose you're growing up in Derry, and you thought to yourself, well, look, uh, maybe I'll shift sticks, yeah, mm. and uh, try something different, and uh, from where I was, but at the same time, just when you went back to Jeanette, did you ever do a family band type? No, 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 because we were always like, Jeanette moved to London. I was in Belfast and then I was in Dublin and then I moved over to London. Jeanette came home. We were always passing, mm, if you yeah, know what I mean, yeah, like ships. Yeah. So, um, and then I was, I would have been in London for seven years and then I was signed by Radioactive and went straight yeah. to LA. And so yeah, it was, yeah. but Jeanette was always there. Yeah. Trust me. So she was Anywhere the big, I was, she she was, she was the big sister, always looking out. So growing up in Derry, just from uh, the days of primary school, uh, going up 15 years of age, mm. uh, like uh, being 15 years of age and mm -hmm. uh, maybe finding your own identity at that stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, so here you were, you're a singer, you're trying to find yourself, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're in among chaos, it's a city going on, mm. and, but people are still people, they all love each other, they back each other. Absolutely. There's a great community spirit, mm -hmm. I imagine, yeah, like all communities and even rural The holiday projects was amazing, we, like, um, you know, we were never taught to be, to hate anybody or there was no, like, most of my friends were Protestant, so, yeah. it, you know, it, it was my mother did cross community work, it, it was just people are people, so yeah. thank, thankfully I was never brought up in so, that kind of environment, so, I was invited. So you were like, well, that's a good thing. Mm, and absolutely. That, and that made you probably think and, and be the person you are today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from, so at the early days then, you'd have been 15, 16, as I say, and you were in Derry. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, did you do any other gigs at that time around bars or? I clubs? was writing then, you see, I, I, I started writing songs. I learned, I taught myself to play guitar. I, and Did I you lock yourself in a room? I, basically, I, I was living in Bayview. Like withdrawal from the world, just <laughs> smoking a wee joint every night and just s uh, with a fire and living in Bayview. And I remember I learned three chords, kind of well. What and were I wrote, magic chords? Was one of them E minor? Yes. G and D. I? <laughs> G and D. Oh, that's class. G D I. And I wrote something like fifteen songs in a week. I was just. Oh, I had so much in me to get out. Yeah. And it was the most yeah. incredible and feeling. Because it was that stage where you could actually put your feelings of what was going on in your Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. On the paper. And therapy. Translate. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And, and, what, and that time it was therapy for mm -hmm. you. But did you, did you do any releases at that time? Do you remember Mike Edgar from BBC Across the Line? Yeah. He, ATL. I, yeah. And he, uh, he had me, he had me singing, doing a, he came in and had me do a live gig and I remember singing, um, a song that I'd written then I did Tina Turner's Private Dancer acoustically and he, and he was like oh god I hate that song and then he heard me sing and he was all oh my he was crying he's Way. like it's all my he was a great contact uh, too he had Mike, me down Mike was brilliant because he, he was he would have been the founder of ATL you know the, across the line yes and, I, I, I spoke, and, and it's Gemma Bradley the local mm -hmm. artist here she's actually the host in that show now brilliant and uh so uh, I know Mike, he, I think he, d he just retired recently and yep. set up some, I think it's a media company or whatever, but what he a was a great champion. So that's showing like way back then, even in the North, no matter what was going on, mm -hmm. there was champions of music and Mike Absolutely. Edgar was certainly one of them. Mary Carson was an amazing champion of mine, like Jesus, she pushed me everywhere and yeah. really promoted me down in, I was in Dublin playing in Mulleray Caps in the Bale Buck and the Purdy Loft with Scullion and Tiernan Oog and people like yeah, that. Yeah. And Mike would have been there, you know, they were just, uh, just good people. And you learned, I suppose, uh, how to craft and your song crafting at that time, I'm sure. Oh, and, and yet again, like anything, you may have been from a, uh, a second city as such, but uh, as such as going out to other cities and mm. going to other places to play, that was all honing your craft and where you are now. Absolutely. Yeah. But I find I find home everywhere I went. I, you know, I always made sure I had a community of people very quickly I went anywhere I loved, just because that made me feel safe and comfortable. Yeah. That's just, I, I do, I've done that everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. can imagine, it's easy uh, for me to meet people and yeah, say hello to people. Yeah, you just go on and say hello. Like, I, I would be one of them people who would, be, they would find it very difficult to speak to people. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to say here. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't know, there's a wee spirit consent, isn't there? And you Absolutely. sort of just have a wee blamber. And, uh, <laughs> like, and, and so you then uh, moved to, you were saying earlier on, uh, to London. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, you were probably just out of your teens, yeah. Is that? Yep. Yeah, and uh, 
I suppose, uh, if it's all right to say, leaving a sort of sheltered, uh, what was Derry City, mm. to, to move into this uh, just multifunctional... Jungle, madness. Madness, uh, everything probably growing at the time you it were It was there. terrifying, uh, yeah. terrifying. And, and maybe areas at that time, um, not as prosperous and as swanky as it is today, mm. do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I had cousins went over there and younger and, and lived in areas of London as well, and then all them yeah. areas are all bought up now. Kirklewood do you know and I mean? yeah. Kilburn. And yeah. But it was very, like... And especially as well because of being Irish, you know. Yeah. I remember trying to get a taxi sometimes, the odd time, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't take it because you were Irish. Because they were. I'm like, I'm not. Do I look like an IRA bomber? I'm not an IRA bomber. I don't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just very sad. Was it, I, well, that's that's obviously um, <coughs> off that time. Mm. Of um, any of us that were moving, and uh, we we had to move through things. There was a certain amount of security. Totally. I uh, just left that though, and I just I'm like, no. Yeah. Why it don't remind me? Because it's a double whammy. I am like, know, like Chris. Yeah. I just want to <laughs> yeah. sing, yeah, write yeah, songs. Uh, yeah, and but you were uh, you were in among uh, creativity, obviously in London, mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, when you first landed there, did you think to yourself like, uh, sure, it was about Danton? Uh, mm. at the start, uh, where am I going to play or who am I going to no, play? No, the first thing uh, I did, Paddy, was I went to the Mean Fiddler in Harleston or uh, Wilston, Harleston and um, I had an old demo tip that I did on Radio Foil and I gave it to them and, and I just said okay got a phone call about two days later saying we'd like you to come in and we'd like to meet you so I was sitting outside in the office <clears throat> and this fella came out and he was looking around and he's all I thought I'm Noella are you looking for me he says what he says you're Noella I, yeah <laughs> and he started laughing. He says, "Well, first of all, I thought you'd be black, and second of all, I thought you'd be a bit older because um, your demo tape so you sound like an old black woman." I'm all, I'm not sure how to take that, but it was amazing, yeah. amazing. And I was, they had, they given me loads of gigs. I, I had no problem getting gigs. In well, the main fiddler at that time would have been a, a very uh, um, busy place for for new artists, and absolutely. New music, uh, 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 Vince, yeah, uh, Pearl. That's right, yeah. Vince Pearl, uh, uh, who was. A massive promoter mm-hmm. started but off selling furniture. There you go, just shows you from, mm-hmm. from fixing an old table leg like, to putting on prints. Hello, I'm on sweet. You know, and uh, like, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't predict that, no, you no. know. And uh, but a fantastic and, and uh, um, um, an Irish promoter mm-hmm. who would have been probably at that time, uh, yet again, um, the Pogues would have been another band, yeah, would have played in around, around that time, I'd mm. imagine, too, with yourself and uh. Like so, you'd have that. So that connection there, obviously, it was a, a venue that was being uh, looked at at the time by, I'm sure, music industry and music people and yep. just people that wanted to help people that were doing music. Mm-hmm. So, uh, did it help you in any way? Uh, oh, it built my confidence. It built my audience. It built. It was just. It it just added so much. Yeah. And for creativity, it was it was very powerful, and the people I met through there, because he owned a lot of clubs all yeah. over, like the one in Islington. And That's right. Yeah. What was it called? I can't remember. It was so long ago. Um, <clears throat> but became, I was singing way like came the, the O2 <coughs> Academy. Is that the yes. one? Yeah. I, I, I can see. I can see it. Mm. Where was our research, Noel? When we I'm needed sorry. it. Here, call oh, me. Hold on. I'm just googling my belly button at the minute here to see if it, <laughs> it comes floating up He's through really my not. stomach, <laughs> and it's happening. Oh, I can hear it. Uh, <laughs> But uh, for now, it was a deadly place to play, yes. right? And, and, and did you meet uh, new friends there? And could you be who you wanted to be, uh, uh, oh, really? You a, know, a million from pers- growing up in Derry, mm. uh, I suppose um, you were who you were. And, uh, very stifled in Derry. I did, felt very stifled mm. in Derry. I, I, I didn't feel I could be myself totally in Derry. Yeah. Mm. First of all, not sure about my my sexual identity. I wasn't sure if I was gay, straight, bi, or if, if I wanted to be a boy. I had no idea. I was so confused, and there wasn't an awful lot of support then. <clears throat> um, in fact, it was the opposite. And I remember e- e- even the pride marches back then. I have to laugh at them now. They're like, they're you know, hundreds of them now marching. I'm like, yeah. there was only about eight yeah. or nine of us then. Yeah, and being joined by people and families and uh, yeah. and uh, and totally. communities. It's br- and, embracing uh, and, it. And, and, and embracing everybody and showing mm. that you're not alone. But you were at a, an, at a time, and I'm aware of that, them times. I grew up, you know, Absolutely. I'm, sli- I'm slightly older than you. Whatever, Paul. You're very young. Okay. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm slightly yeah. older, you know. Uh, and uh, But uh, so that uh, sort of, for you then, and all that was going on, and, and uh, who did you speak to? Who, who became your sort of uh, uh, confidant? Or so, who, who was that person that was the person you least could tell? Obviously, there would be people in your family you would tell, but who was your friend type to say, look, 
Well, the oh, first right. person that, that I was able to tell was my mommy. Yeah. She was, my mommy still to this day is, is the person I go to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my sister Jeanette obviously is amazing. Yeah. All my family are amazing yeah. and they all just love me for who I am. And yeah. they're, you know, I'm very protected in that respect. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> coming because home. Because you're, you're, you're just a sister, brother, everybody's uncle, oh, cousin, you're all, we're family, hi, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a powerful know, unit, Jinjar. <clears throat> yeah. Family is. Yeah, you have a powerful unit family. I know I from your showcase and all. Definitely. Yeah. So. But I remember, like, you know, coming home from a disco, just, just one example. <clears throat> and because I said no to a boy, you know, I was, remember, halfway home and being jumped by five or six fellas no and they way. battered us. Aye. No way. Because I said no to him and they says, you must be gay then. I says, what? No, you're just ugly, like. And that was it. I got battered. Jeez. And but that was a long time ago. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. It's really not. Not not in It's not like that <laughs> anymore. And it, yeah, and that's a really that's a Thank good thing. God. Yeah. But at the end of the day it happened and it mm. was traumatic for you at that time. Mm. And uh but you stood up, you were strong. Mm -hmm. Uh you then went on and you moved into London where maybe uh um Sometimes you think the whole world is so accepting to everything that is no, out there in the I world. Know, and then you think there's these big cities, we're so cool, yeah, we're so, yeah, you yeah, know, like no, pineapples be healed and all these <laughs> things, you know what I mean? And uh, it's all right, like, you know what I mean? It used to pineapple. be strawberries, you know, totally. but now it's pineapples, you know? But uh, so you moved to London and could you, did you feel it then and go, yep, there, I'm just not alone here. There's communities. That, uh, uh, London for me served a purpose. I, I, I didn't want to live in London for as long as I did, but I had to because there was nowhere else really for what I wanted to do in music because um, I wanted to meet people who were incredible musicians who inspired me or who, you know, motivated me. And I met some incredible musicians there and I formed different bands. I had, I had a few different bands there. I had an all-girl band and we feckin' rocked. And <clears throat> we were amazing. Because I had, I, had, I had hundreds of songs by the stage. I was constantly writing in London. And... Um, we got a residency in a place called Madame Jojo's in Soho, which was an extremely exclusive strip club. Was it there? Was that the, was that the tune or not? Yes. Uh, little knee it, coming out outside the curtain. <laughs> so we, so, so we, we, we had this residency every Wednesday night. Yeah. And it was just really like, you know, at them days, it was like 25, 30 pounds to get into this place. Packed out, I'd imagine. Jammed. Yeah. We, like, we, we, Robbie Williams, and um, I remember Mariah Carey coming in with an entourage. And, yeah. and this is where I met George, boy George. George came in, <laughs> he came under the, and he stood at the back and he was just staring because I, I was just, you can imagine me uh, when I was like 20 odds, uh, like I was on fire. Uh, had you got the, like, had you, oh, uh, I was just, just sort of, yeah, man, standing just, there going, I don't care uh, you just want what beat, beat, I make you feel. You just want to beat the songs out. Yes. But at that time, you, you didn't realise was you were beating the songs out and you were making people feel a certain way. Yes. And obviously, boy George came in, uh, who, let's, uh, Massive star in the 80s himself, yeah. But George came up to me afterwards and he says, now I'm sitting in the in the back in the green room, right, with two strippers, gorgeous girls, completely buck naked because they're going they're about to go on. They're just you know shining themselves up, and that was just the way it was. It was just professional. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't look at them. You didn't look like them, like they were just doing their job. But George comes in and he's all, nobody has ever scared me before. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> and I was all. Okay, he says, "Look, I want to meet you tomorrow. Please meet me tomorrow." Because he had a, he just started his own label, More Protein. Yeah. So I met him anyway with my manager. <clears throat> of course, we sat in the wrong place in the wrong restaurant. And you had a manager at this stage. I Mick. Yeah. Well, it, uh, it was he, more did, my friend. Aye, so I so it was sort of <laughs> it was like a, a friend that sort of just done bits and pieces for aye, you. It was aye. just good to have somebody aye. who was you know because I did everything on my own if, unless I had the band. And especially in London, it probably looked good to have Mick. The it manager. was more crack. Like, like Mick, the manager, like he's like an M and M, isn't he? Mick like, he, he became a very famous Absolutely. suite, didn't he? Yes, he did. We'll not tell <laughs> the world that. that it's him. <laughs> we'll not say. But Mick would have been uh, well connected too. He knew like aye. like Mick Jones was a big fan of mine, and um, there was. I, anyway, London was, so we went, we were, we would go to uh, all these Did parties. you go out and see, like when, just taking you away from that, when you would, uh, went out, did you know, see other artists that maybe at that time inspired you, had the opportunity to meet other artists and different things? Only at parties because yeah. I, we were, I, I, we were skint. I uh, had no, you don't get yeah. paid for gigs in London. Yeah. It's all promotion. 
And I, I worked in Camden Market on a Saturday and Sunday yeah. to make rent and, and to yeah. feed myself, yeah. which was very little. Yeah, so boy George was there. He, yep, met no. him the next day and he says, look, this is the first thing he said to me. <clears throat> so you a big dyke? And I'm like, and I looked at him and I looked straight at him. I says, this isn't going to work out, George. Because if you're already judging me on who the fuck I sleep with, it's none of your business. Mm. I says, so I'm, that's going to be a no for me. And um, don't ever insult me again because that my sexuality is such a small facet of who I am. Yeah, <clears throat> and yeah. You, if that's all you're going to hone in on. It's part of your overall person. Absolutely, yeah. and but it's, it's part of your fabric now. And and uh, and how did uh, George? Uh, so I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm someone sorry. like that there who was a big name. I, himself, I didn't care. I didn't uh, no, care. No, no. But as I say, you fucking stood up and oh, you, you know I, you you I, done your thing. Like see that. when I was see when I was gonna I was invited on the record labels or when I was. Invited to meet anybody, I was interviewing them. Yeah. Because I used to think, what what can you do for me? Because this is this is mine. This is all I have. This is my baby. Yeah. I'm not trusting it with anybody. Yeah. I don't. Ca- I walk in there like I'm a millionaire. I don't care that I'm starving and eating fucking brekkies. Yeah. Yeah. Cat food uh, because I have not. I thought enough they one. were like a form of wheat bread. There, you know, like <laughs> no, like, like a yellow pack. That's what Argentina said the other day. I thought they were like a. Starving. I thought they were mm. like a form of yellow pack. No. You know, the, the, you know, you get, no. you know, do you know the yellow packs? You get the rolls rush. You get the wheat yeah. bread. Rolls rush, and then you get the yellow pack here. But they'll taste all right. They're the same <laughs> stuff and all. No, they're not. <laughs> you know, so what was yours called again? Brekkies. Uh, it was, what, it was cat. It was cat. There were wee tiny bits of, like cat food. That was wee um, cat treats. It was just. Aye. I was so hungry. Anyway, but so, <laughs> but George was all okay. No, I didn't mean to insult you. I said you're not insulting me, but you're you're just you know you're defining me, and you can't yeah. define me. You don't even know me. Aye. So he says, look. Think about it anyway. He says, but I want you to play the Shepherd's Bush Empire with me and do a few other big gigs with me. So did that anyway. Deadly. Brilliant, brilliant crack. So singing Karma Chameleon with him. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, people used to think we were brother and sister. We'd probably give it a line here, but it's serious to the backbone and back and forward and back and forward. <laughs> <laughs> Fast version. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, I rocked the shit out of it. Uh, like, I was and how was that for you? Like, uh, I suppose, and yet again, growing up in, uh, in, in Derry at the time, mm. and this is someone that uh, was having hits. Absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, like w- broke America too, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, but so I didn't care. I don't care. I, I, yeah. And I, I says, I said to him, look, George, I don't want to. I really appreciate your offer, but I don't want to ride in the back of you. Yeah. Because I don't want to be seen as boy George's we protege or whatever. It's you know. Yeah. But he he really respected me for that. Yeah. And and you know he he, became, he was a good friend of mine. Um. But then I was signed by Universal. Yeah. I so got signed. Like was it, and was and was that in London at the time? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, did you stay in London then? So for the release of that, or who who recorded it with you? Or did no, you I went to um, Jerry Harrison from the Talking Heads. Yeah, Jerry had produced Throwing Copper, that live album, which was just incredible. Lightning crashes. So <clears throat> I said to the the company, the great producer, yeah. "Oh my God, what a man!" He mm. came to London to meet me. Because I he was my first choice and a producer to produce an album with me, and he came to London. Fantastic belief in your music. Absolutely, yeah. he came. I, I did a big gig, had my band and all there, but they did they weren't signing the band; they were only signing me because I was yeah. the I was the songwriter and the singer and the. Was well, that know. a really weird moment for the band? Whenever I think they uh, kind of knew uh, they weren't they were good, but they weren't good enough. Uh, and you have to. Yeah. You know, it's so important for the songs. You have to have the best. The best people. And, and I had incredible. So I was flown straight to um, L.A. to meet all the company, huge company. And then I went to Sausalito, San Francisco, where Jerry lived. And we recorded the album in the Plant Studios, really famous, famous studio, where Fleetwood Mac recorded Rumours. Exact unreal. same room, same unreal. people. Oh, and how'd that with Perry you Prince. Into such a historic... Uh, arena to uh like um uh, you know some people say you're the most famous uh lady in Derry. non-famous <laughs> uh, famous yeah. uh, uh, no, i know yeah, but, but yeah, people but never ask me they know but uh, nobody goes where were you for 20 years i'm yeah. like well how long have you got i but the thing is uh, i suppose it's it's in times that geese and people realize Absolutely. what what mm. this was like so what about that time in america then and the whole lifestyle of rock and roll and uh, out and about and some would say that it was it was, was a dream a, was there partying going on did it take you unaware did you you know were you involved with people that maybe back then uh, were only starting on their career that that you could just say look where they're at now and 
you were maybe in the same rooms as them at that time when you were actually I was so busy having a, a good time <laughs> I didn't give a fuck yeah I honestly didn't care about being famous or and I just wanted to sing play I was doing a lot of touring I was doing the South by Southwest I was doing all the, the big festivals I was singing my van and and you name it and then I was doing the like with Cheryl Crow and the Dixie Chicks and people like that you know I, I was well, playing with all these like 30,000 people but it, none of it faced me because I, I didn't give a fuck I, but you were there I, I uh, was you know, there at the end of the day these people were you, you know like you, credit to you you know like mm. you, you know, you're just saying oh well I was just with Cheryl Crow and there was 30,000 that is amazing and, mm. and to credit to you and, and credit to your voice and your passion for your music that got you because people don't just put you in a bubble like that there just, no, you know, I just know, for the I sake know, of it and you know and so we'll, we'll talk about so playing with Cher Crow, who uh, at that time I think uh, her biggest her biggest album was out that mm. time, and that right. So that she so disappointed me though, because <laughs> I was a massive fan of Cher Crow. <laughs> she was so cold. Ah, uh, such a cold person. I was like devastated. Yeah. The nicest person I met was um, Sarah McLaughlin. Dixie Chicks were so cool, just yeah. down the earth, like uh, Stevie Nicks. Yeah. White Watch, just just hilarious, but funny. And how did you meet the likes of Stevie Nicks? We did the, I did the Lil Affair. Is that a festival? It's, it was a big, it's all women festival. In, uh, absolutely. Women of the world, you know. There was only about, there was only about 11 of us and I was one of them. Dad, who else was playing? Was Lexi Joan Beth, Hammer Trader? Beth Orton, uh, Chrissy Hines. Unreal. Oh, a plethora of amazing girls like Sinead would have been there at some stage. So Sinead O'Connor was there as well. But uh, I was singing with Sinead like 10 years before, like five years before that, six years before that. Uh, well, where was that at? And I would have played the big Irish festivals up upstate New York and over in um, West the, Coast. The Yonkers, what you were mentioning earlier on. Yes. There. Yeah, the Yonkers. Yonkers. <laughs> yeah, so that must but have was, been deadly. So mm. that was, and... Uh, and Chris well, Moore and all them uh, guys. Would that have been the likes of, yet again, would that have been the to Vince Powell and putting on gigs like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. In America, and totally. You, and you can see then how... The oh, from fit, the Mean Fiddler, uh, from a wee dairy girl coming to the Mean Fiddler to London to... Yeah, you can see how the connection mm. was made oh, there, and, absolutely. That was, that, and uh, that's brilliant. And who who else? So the likes of uh, the festivals, like I mean, you, you mentioned there, uh, Stevie Nicks was that mm. at a gig as well? Was that, that was the, the woman? Yep. Yeah. And who else play? Who else did you do a big like live thing at the I, end? You know, we all come on. We all, other. we all sang a well, put a little love in your heart all together. I have photographs of it, but, but we see when you're in it. Y yeah. You're not see social media now. If I had social media now, what I was doing back then, oh uh, my god! I know you. The was, crack. I know the you Playboy was, Mansion. Every, oh my god! Uh, well, tell us about the Playboy <laughs> Mansion. As I uh, know, I want to just say at this stage for the ladies and gentlemen out there, this is a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Sabbath so, day. <laughs> but I, I would also say that it's an independent, free-speaking world. Absolutely. And uh, uh, could I hear I hear ye in the far corner? Hear ye! Yeah, and praise so, Jesus. Uh, man. Praise be to 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 Nathan out there in the far room. The <laughs> Thanks, quickest, Nathan. The quickest string changer I, inside he, of I'm anywhere. taking him with me, okay? I know. And it, like, you get, get, a wee, get a wee flight case and just slip him in. I'm just slip him in there. Where's Nathan at? He's coming on tour with me. And, and all the pups. <laughs> but, so, you were uh, out partying away. and Living uh, in Hollywood. I just toured extensively. I was probably on tour for three years, on and off. Yeah, we were, uh, were you off the Weedabix then? At least you were getting food then, weren't you? Yes, I yeah. was definitely off the Weedabix. Right, dead, dead. There's so much happened. There's so much. I, I could talk for days. Go like, ahead. But I, I, a lot of it's... Like, flashbacks aye. aye what did I just say there I probably asked you the same thing what's three my name <laughs> I asked you the same thing three times in a row but don't worry uh, so go ahead you're, 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 anyway. at, you're at this party and uh, you have to be invited to play by mine just all very yeah and uh, so uh, whatever did you know uh, it was Halloween night and, and I was an angel and I was gorgeous I yeah. thought I was gorgeous yeah you were done up like an angel totally right? and you went down to the Playboy yep, uh, House of Representatives House of Representatives yeah <laughs> so uh, how did that go for you it was wild crack and was it all our sort of you know uh, it was all famous celebrities and, uh, Ben Affleck oh, you know everybody Leo yeah. all of them yeah. everybody you can mention but this was before they had all real shiny white <clears throat> teeth wasn't it oh, you, know, you know real shiny teeth now everybody has so, so and, annoying and were you chatting to any of these individuals I or? walked in right because they I, made like your accent you know what I mean and listen your old banter, I walked you know, in right banter, you can banter the bad outlook, you, know, up, no. you know, you can banter. I can't them. get a word in. I can't get a word in. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go ahead I there. cannot get a word in. Go ahead there. No, anyway. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Joe, Patty. Uh, no, so I would walk in anyway, and, and he has the Blair Witch Project. He's got, you want to see this, what he has put on for her. He was the most generous man. Unbelievable. 
I walks in anyway. And he, mu- he must have heard my accent because he yeah. made a beeline for me. And I, <clears throat> I says, look, Hugh, before, any, before you start, it's never going to happen. And he started laughing. <laughs> and <laughs> he I was doesn't like, mess around, I, does no, he? No, <laughs> God, God rest him. And he sat down beside me and, and I was like, so what's the crack? Like, what's the crack with all these gears? Right? And he says, I says, look, I know there's no way in God's earth that's, that's happening. He says, no, it's just for show. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's all a fantasy. Like, yeah. But oh, America to me, going, living in America was like living in a movie. I yeah. f- constantly felt like I would love... You know, when your dream, my dream was always to go to America. Yeah. That was just something I always wanted was to do. Was that from you really young? Really right? young. What's up by here and their artists, like oh, the Motown artists Look at watching that. Elvis Presley. Ah, just the lifestyle. Ah, ice compartments, ah, come on. I know. Like, <laughs> do you know ah, what I mean? Ice cubes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was just a fantasy. Yeah. And, and the, it was real for me. It yeah. was, uh, that's, uh, that's how I felt the whole time I lived in America. I, f- I, l- I was living a dream. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I, people were so kind to me. Yeah. I felt like I was so well looked after. Yeah. And so it's, you're nearly like an Irish American sort of. I'm totally Irish American. Yeah. I absolutely. Yeah. So mm. and that the place itself had a big impact. And uh, as I say, well, there's election time at the minute. <laughs> election. Oh, oh, but, but Biden's, he's Irish. There you go. He's opening the ways again. Yeah. And another uh, thing we both uh, have a bit of a love for is... Uh, Dogs. dogs. Yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. oh, intercept. Pull the ad in. It's about the dogs. Uh, well, my dog was recently at the vet. And, uh, yes. So, uh, like, he's getting older. And he's, and so the vet decided he's uh, degenerative. Is that right? Mm. He's an older dude. So I thought, like, uh, if that's the case, he's got a wee lump. So mm-hmm. I might go for dog living allowance, the DLA. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone out there, for anyone out there, anyone out there that uh, has a dog that might have a lump, oh, hey, fill in the form. I'm worth a form. I'm getting a fortune. Who knows? You know, who knows? You know and, uh, uh, but he went to the vet the, the last time and it's, it's pretty mad now to have a dog. And anybody out there that has a dog at the minute with uh, all this going on, are you not allowed to go on to the no, vet? No, it's awful. And it's a kind of a, a moment of, you know, you're handing your dog over and you're <laughs> like thinking. Like your baby. Aye, like, and I mean, Mojo, the last time he was down, like Emer and Stella went down with him and he just sort of sat in his butt, sort of, and they had to live a wee, a wee <laughs> line of treats, a wee line of treats now, <laughs> right? And round the corner to go into the vet because he sort of went and protest, I ain't moving. No, you know? and, uh, no. But, but he, uh, <laughs> so he's in good form, he's in good form now, but he's, he's getting older. And uh, I mean, uh, obviously anybody out there has a dog for a long, t- a long time. Uh, has a lot of love for it and, uh, and uh, they care for it um, with um, a massive love all the mm. time. And uh, so you uh, have uh, uh, like a twofold love. You've, you, there's a, you look after a lot of dogs and you also uh, uh, work in a rescue centre mm. for dogs. Uh, uh, and how, how's that for you? The rescue centre, I suppose, but because I, I, I wouldn't be aware of it. You were just chatting. My best friend started, because um, I used to volunteer with, in Rainbow not anymore. This was a few years ago and um, I met Suzanne Fleming and she um, started her own rescue along with another girl and I would, I can't do admin because I'd be killing people because people yeah. are a nightmare. Yeah. Um, so I would Is be it the, the paper one. Just, it the paper puts you for yeah. No, it's it's just p- the the cruelty of people uh, and, uh, and you just need to be just the, 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 the ignorance of people. Yeah, you know, like yeah. uh, can I get a dog? I want that dog there. Yeah. No, you can't have no. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. No, we, there's so much to it. There's home checks. There's every dog, every cat, every duck, everything that comes under our care has to go straight to the vets. It could be a hundred pound. It could be five hundred. Some of our animals have cost us two grand, so we have to uh, we have to fundraise for that. But um, Suzanne how, started this. Yeah, yeah. We have fosters. Yeah. We have amazing fosters. We don't have a a, a, a premises. No, well, uh, well I mean, uh, so we, we don't need a premises. Yeah. We have fosters. They go straight to the fosters for at least a week or two weeks. So people, so we can gauge. Ah, uh, so people, so people take the dog for a week. Uh, is that right? Fosters, uh, yeah, I, and. Uh, so have them people an opportunity then to keep the dog or... And, and then we've lost a foster. Uh, so it's not good for us, but... Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. And but we have, amazing, we have an amazing team of people around us. Like, is there a Facebook page or... Yep, uh, Friends of Rescue. Yeah. It's just Friends of Rescue. You have, uh, 
it's gotten mm. quite a big following now. Like. That's really good because mm. I think it's really important. That, and I suppose uh, the, uh, any animals at, mm. at the stage of, of lockdown were important to people uh, mm. having that there. And especially as few, a lot of older people and the smaller dogs that mm. they would be living. And, and with. have you found that uh, at the time of lockdown, uh, there was... Puppy I, farms were making a fortune. I thought there was a lot of dogs about mm-hmm. myself. I would go out Shocking. walking with the dog. And uh, do you, uh, as a rescue centre, mm. have you found that there's been more dogs sort of left to loose now? Absolutely. That when you realise when you have a dog, it's... Uh, it's 24 7. It's thunder, it's lightning, mm. it's sunburn. Yep. It's ankle burn, Absolutely. it's all these things. It's leg burns, it's all sore all legs, right. all these things, but it's all wellers. And uh, so. Do you think that the problem lies in that, you know, we aren't in a, in a country that it's just sort of saying sunshine all the time. You sometimes you're wondering, where is it coming from? I don't know. You know, next Tuesday, I promise you, you know, this weather Fire. break, this weather break is truth and it's whole truth help. and nothing but the truth. So help <laughs> the weather man. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, uh, do you feel that that's happened, uh, you know, in the there's a There's been a massive influx of um, puppies being bought, basically, on like, we're always trolling like the the sell sell but you know buy yeah. and sell pages and stuff because puppies for sale they're not uh, they're not registered people they shouldn't be selling puppies yeah. who knows where they've come from yeah. have you seen the mommy and daddy yeah. please stop buying pups go and rescue a, a dog or a cat or whatever it is you want rescue yeah. because there's so many that need love yeah uh, well, that, really? And right on, you're totally mm. right there. So basically, for people out there... Christmas uh, is coming too, and this yeah, is a nightmare buying for your children yeah, that, who have no clue how to look after where, a That's pup. where Mojo, our dog, came from. An email uh, picked it, and that's how it came mm. about. It was one of them uh, uh, centres. So keep the dogs, Ben Varden, uh, was it? Where up, did you get uh, your... It's way up uh, country somewhere. I can't remember now. Mm. But uh, yet again, she knew when she looked at it, and we all kind of knew. And, and yet again, it hadn't been looked after too well before it. And uh, you're actually for... Uh, anyone that takes a dog like that, mm. that dog will be forever and and oh. your 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 love because that you've rescued that dog from oh. whatever it's been before, and that takes a wee while to get through all that. And can you and imagine though coming into a strange house, not knowing if that person's going to batter you the way they was battered before? Yeah. So it's a transition, but yeah. once it's over that couple of weeks or whatever it takes, it's incredible the reward yeah. of rescuing an animal. Brilliant! It's a brilliant thing. Absolutely, it's a brilliant thing, and so. For anybody out there, they've got the Facebook, check it out. Friends and, of uh, Rescue. And uh, uh, go to Rescue Dogs. Wherever before, you love, uh, Rescue a Dog. Yeah, yeah. Do not buy a pup. Yeah, and it seems to be a big thing and mm. all these, you know, and the, and the price as well is it's huge. To, to See, unless they've got a KC register, they, by all means, go and buy a dog. If that's really what you want and that you, there's a specific dog you're looking for, just make sure they have a KC register. You see the mommy and the daddy of the dog. And they have, you know, they mm. have to be up to standard. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to get a pup that is probably in, in excruciating pain yeah. from God knows what kind of ailments. You don't yeah. know. You don't know. Uh, yeah. So, so. And we uh, clean up the messes of them. Yeah. So if we had a hashtag for this, <laughs> what would we call it? Would we say, you know, Stumpy re- Dick. rescue the pups? Yeah. Yeah. So well, put our hands up together and what do we say? Rescue the pups. Rescue the pups. Don't and, buy, uh, rescue. Uh, don't buy, rescue. Save your cash for other things. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and times it be, you're doing good by saving a dog. Absolutely. Uh, need, you know what I mean? So, right. So we were in the USA. USA, uh, man. USA. And we had done a few gigs with a few big stars. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, did it go? Did you? I'm sure you, because your personality would show you that you'll keep grounded anyway, no matter right. what was grounded. And I, I think was, that's a good thing because mm. then that maybe means more people would be speaking to you. And you spoke a bit earlier on about Sinead O'Connor. Mm. Did you work together? I know you put a picture up the two ends together when you were oh, both. We do. We, I just uh, did a few gigs with her. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like I'm sure Sinead, you you would have only been maybe what twenty and she uh, went twenty two three or something mm. like that. I think, uh, uh, so. How, where did you play together at then? I, I was singing with Sinead. Um, I think I did a gig in London too with Sinead. I did, I was upstate New York and it was over in the the, other, the West Coast as well. We did a big gig. Um, and then she did the Little Affair as well. And I remember sitting down with her and I smoked at the time. And I said, Sinead, you don't have any fags, do you? And she's all, she's so shy. She's yeah. so painfully shy <laughs> and gorgeous. She was gorgeous. And um, she still is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And she went away. I was like, oh, I must have offended her. <laughs> she came back about 20 minutes later with three silk cut. I'm like, where did you get silk cut? <laughs> In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it was so funny. She was yeah. lovely. She yeah. was very troubled. Yeah, well, I, I mean, a good girl, though. And well, maybe somebody down the line again you might work with now, you know, that 
where you're at now with your new your music and new Amelda May I'm absolutely Amelda May to me is is somebody I would love to gig with and, and work with I just absolutely think she's amazing send it out to the universe go on Amelda Amelda if you may or may not be listening I was supposed to I was supposed to support her in the the forum before the the jazz festival uh, and then I was just supposed to do another gig with her but it all fell through because of COVID well it will happen then oh I have no it's doubt it's going to happen maybe I, I'll tell you what if you're supposed to on a tune together it will be a better oh my it would be you could belt would, it out like I would love she's such a lovely girl too yeah, yeah. she's amazing uh, and, and a strong artist yeah mm-hmm. and so from there um, in America we uh, you, sh- you just I suppose you came of age of what age did you leave America then 33. 33. So you were there a good few years. Mm. and I lost my mind. Was it hard on the road or was it uh, what was going on around mm. you? or was No, it, uh, there was just... Too many, like, was it... There uh, was just stuff happened when I was younger that I hadn't dealt with and it, re- it, it wasn't letting me get away with it. So I had to come home and face and open a can of worms and hurt a lot of people and I didn't really want to do that. So, yeah. But unfortunately, we have no control over... The, the shit that happens to us when we're young. So we have yeah. to, you know, ha- address it. Yeah. And, and it, it was the best thing I did. Yeah. And it was always there, as you say. And, and mm. it's just, uh, I think you've, you came of age to sort of, uh, I suppose, uh, work through it. And and mm. and what you've seen is a diplomatic way. And uh, you, uh, but you had all them years and, and you gained all that sort of uh, musical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you came back uh, back home to old, old Derry, you know, and mm. uh, as I say, I suppose at that stage you were um, you were coming home and uh, on one side you were, you were probably elated you'd, you'd spent so long in America mm. and on the other side you'd come home uh, you had come home at that time to what was uh, just at the time of the the peace deal was struck mm. again not right the the Good Friday Agreement that's right and uh, so you landed back then and then I suppose for a few years uh, you you would have played around the, the bars or mm. or just. Well, I, did you when find I came home, coming back and getting strength again and coming around? No, no. not at all. No. I came back home. I was really unwell, mm. and I needed, um, I needed a lot of help, like yeah. for um, just trauma stuff yeah. like that. And I was probably partying a lot and stuff like that because I just wasn't wasn't a very ha- wasn't very happy. But I didn't know it at the time, and um, I, I was writing. I was still writing, which was great. Probably what kept me alive, but. Um, I, I, Derry, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't happy singing in Derry again at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find it f- coming from doing where gigs where people were actually sat, sat and actually listened to you uh, yeah. and cared the most about what. Thing of you, I, uh, but not even like as an ego thing, just as a, a human being. Yeah. This song is really personal to me and I want to sing it, but I can't mm. because I have to sing some fucking stupid covers yeah. and entertain you, yeah. even though. You can't be proud of me for going and doing that. Uh, it was you, almost yeah. like, you know. Uh, yeah. Do you, you fit, did, and, and then, like, obviously, because people will be listening to uh, this here, you know, and uh, mm. and your newfound fans online and all that there mm. will speak about uh, that, you know, won't know any of that. Like, no. people, like, you know, there's people, maybe people in this room wouldn't have known that you were sitting in the same studio as Fleetwood Mac. And, mm. and then know. I can't get a gig in Derry because, and nobody ever, I'm very, very rarely I can get a, a, somebody would, approach me and go would you like to do this and my art Jeanette will tell you the same yeah. it was awful yeah, yeah awful yeah and we weren't you know we weren't in the click yeah clickety click uh, clickety click clickety click and we don't click and Jerry still doesn't know what that's all about <laughs> sorry and, uh, and I know and, 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 and know. but so you got to as you said earlier on yeah you, you had to there was uh, trauma and uh, mm. there was uh I suppose a reshaping of you, uh, a mm-hmm. reshape, emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually, mm-hmm. I would take it at the time, and uh, so that takes time. Absolutely. And uh, ten like, years. There you go. Still working on it. Yeah, but you're here, and you're, uh, you know, you're you're smiling. Your Absol- eyes are smiling. Oh and, no, uh, I'm a, I'm an, yeah. a, I'm the best I've ever been. That's brilliant. And mm-hmm. for people out there mm-hmm. that that maybe are suffering even uh, forms of trauma or traumatic stress mm. or mental everybody, health everybody everybody out there that, is suffering in and, some way but you're proof that mm. we can get be wherever we are totally and come back and music does that and and mm. you writing down them stories would have done that because you were releasing it and Absolutely. you know and that was going into your into your music so at, and then when you did uh, so then it's where 
um, it's like a fairy tale story now. What mm. happens with Justin? Uh, yep. Yeah, and, doing uh, the album. And, yeah, and mm-hmm. so Justin had seen you performing uh, in America. In America, mm-hmm. all right. And uh, Justin lived just over the border in Donegal, mm-hmm. and uh, was not aware of yourself being from the, Derry. Uh, this superstar in his eyes. So you know what. Uh, well. uh, right, so he, he's bringing that, he's bringing that, <laughs> what was happening in America back, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a small bit of that energy that you felt mm-hmm. out there. And uh, so he sort of hears that you're back in town, you've went through them years, uh, you've, uh, you've uh, met, you've strengthened yourself, you've always sang, mm-hmm. you're still, you're still fighting were, a bit out yeah, there. And you still were, yeah, and you were still writing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Justin came along and all of a sudden, uh, uh, he approached your good self. He had a wee studio and all, and he was aware that you're home. And he felt he basically felt that uh, the Noella Hutton that he had witnessed in America should be out performing again, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. he Absolutely. he was the person that sort of wasn't oh, he, that came me. in and uh, out of all like, all the help you, you were getting all that time. This. Um, like I suppose for you've, ten years you've, he's been doing this. He's been pushing and pushing me like in and out for over ten years, and I'm just. Mm. But do you know why though? I was. I just felt so empty, living in Derry and not being able to. People just not wanting to. You know, you're you're sitting in a bar competing with a fucking poker machine and yeah. people taking selfies of themselves, and you're like, yeah. why am I even sitting here? Yeah. Yeah. Just press play on a tape, you know. Yeah. It was so frustrating. Yeah, and, and I, then they're trying to oh, shit. It was just shit. And that, that, but and and I suppose like any uh, musician, because that's what you are full time. Mm. You do these things, and it's it's not always no, it's not what worth. you want to do. No. And uh, but Justin came along, uh, Night and Shine and Armor, an mm-hmm. Angel, as you've quoted on, yeah, on absolutely, and some of the uh, the your press releases. Mm-hmm. And so here we had then a, a stage of. Um, I suppose online you were letting people know who Noella was, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we did a document. He did, he says we have to do a documentary. Yeah. People need to know what you've done and what where you've been. And I said, oh, really, people really want to know, like, because as I say, Derry knocks a shit in conference. It's you? it's a it's a, hard. It's a Northern Ireland thing. Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus, it's yeah. awful. Yeah, but uh, but you're stronger to it now, right? And that's mm. that's that's where you're getting there. So Justin came along, and uh, like I'm aware that because. You, you done the documentary as, a, as mm. I say and uh, you got together then and you started writing and mm. uh, did that sort of to get back in that well I'd scene, already written I was all, already I had already written the album you had all done mm. and so it was just a, you know we had a, a Justin was producing the album yeah so we spent a year <laughs> once yeah. a week <laughs> just getting in and going hmm ah. yeah and just getting it done but it came out a great album. Mm, and, I'm so proud of it. Yeah, and uh, so and it sort of like even in here, you, you released it in February mm-hmm. and uh, in the gas yard uh, yeah. down the road from where you originally lived, mm-hmm. and uh, the room was packed. Love and, the gas uh, yard. Uh, great, amazing community of people in there. There was a lot of local people there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you go to gigs and uh, you know that like people will be all they're different fans. Obviously, they're mm-hmm. there for different reasons. But you could feel when you're in the room comes up with Stella, and you could feel in the room that. Uh, uh, they were uh, all there f- to just to support me. Aye, I know it was and, amazing. And there was a lot of a lot of tears uh, oh. floating around. There was a bit of a sponge bath at the times, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. I seen you. <laughs> that's life, though. That's I, you know. I seen you up with the left popping your head out. I think you were thinking, "Is everybody there?" And, you, and okay? maybe not even knowing that the mm. place was packed because it was darkness. Mm. And uh, so, and you had a brilliant band that mm. night with you. So you were playing again, and, and so we had a gig planned. Uh, I know down here, uh, which was to be in March, was to go inside mm-hmm. with your uh, album. So I suppose now with your album. It's nearly as if it sort of just came out and it just, you know, as we were and saying, everything so was on hold. Just sort of like mm. it was just a big vacuum hold. So, mm. will you come out again with a, a sort of a like another launch? You know, absolutely, as if, as if a quantum leap. You know, I'm thinking comes, Wembley. Uh, just, just <laughs> pop out, just ten nights in the O2. You know, oh, J. Yeah. yeah, welcome down. You know, and but you know, because these are things I suppose that you'll be thinking about. And uh, like we didn't mention earlier on too, like you were involved in uh, when that time in America, you were involved in uh, TV ads and different mm, things. Commercial, uh, did a lot of commercial work. Well, is that something you think about again now? Because or uh, uh, who, who, do you, who do you approach here? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. It's, again, it's all clicks. Yeah. Uh, and I we, don't have the strength to even. Uh, but what about that experience? What was it like, and who did you do some of the ones 
Well, I remember um, the first time I was asked, I was asked, it was my drummer's wife worked for this commercial company, huge commercial company, and um, they were based in Santa Monica in California. And um, they asked me to come in and do a, a trailer for a Coca-Cola com- commercial. And I was like, what? I don't, what? So I'm done in a way. I thought, fuck it. It's by the beach. We'll have a laugh. Walked in in a way and um, started singing, you know, they they gave me a wee sort of they says just watch the monitor and you know improvise do was well, the words just coming up like it well or, or, I had you there uh, had you there already in the song or was it well I but I sort of made it my own as ah, well yeah, you know yeah, yeah you yeah, can imagine yeah. but I got it I won the commercial brilliant and I was like okay and then I was part of SAG which is so impossible to get in the the Screen Actors Guild you have to like. Ha- oh. Did you have to? Like, oh, yeah. bully, darling. Uh, all, no, the, all, that, that. all that training you've done, you know, you know, in the local faces, you know, you're an angel and all no, singing no. and all that crack, you know, and there, you know, let's sure. all to play. I was an angel. Uh, uh, how no, did that go then? That, no, but so that was the first commercial then. I was, I was, lit- I literally loved in the studio then. I was singing on, like I was doing choirs with my voice. I was, you know, doing all these Just different all the harmonies. Layers. Doing yeah. all the yeah. layers and making a f- clean fortune like yeah. the checks that were coming in yeah. it was shut and yeah. I spent every single penny yeah sent money home because you had food back. to get real food I, this time my, my rent in Santa Monica was three grand a month it was shocking but my life was amazing Aye. and I was singing on like the Nike commercial I did for um, well for Nike um, it was I remember they were they were saying it was between me and Joe Cocker for this commercial and I was like shut up wise up and so I went down in a way and you are so beautiful to me <laughs> and the Nike people just come in the room that we're going with the Irish girl we're going to st- we want her okay and Joe right. didn't even get Joe a Joe didn't get a look uh, in well do you know what that's like I mean he is an amazing oh singer. what a man ma- oh well I, proving yet again you have an amazing voice no it's not and, I, uh, it's just it was just the right thing at the right time yeah and like to come from Derry to get involved in that <laughs> is amazing did we come from Derry right did we sitting and my friend, my friend, uh, Amy, Michelle Jones, right? Her aunt is Olivia Newton-John. This is just a wee story. So I'm sitting in Olivia's house. Olivia used to come and see my gigs as well in, in, um, in Hollywood and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> there's only about four or five of us. It's Amy's birthday. So we're sitting in Santa Monica by the beach outside, fire pit going. Um, and I'm always singing. I don't even know I'm singing, but I'm singing. There's a knock on the door. That's a knock. And um, Pamela Anderson and Kid Rocker stand there, and they're like, "Who's the Irish girl with the voice?" And Amy's all, "That's my friend." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so they're like, "Why don't you just come in next door?" There's only a couple of us in there. It was be David Spade and Julie Bowen and Kid, uh, Mr. Rock, whatever, and Pamela and a few other people. So we were all there, gorgeous. Pamela, not a stitch of makeup, gorgeous girl, absolutely stunning. We pair of jeans. Her house was beautiful, really beachy. And she sits me right down, right beside her, right? <laughs> I kid you not, look, you couldn't write it. I'm a wee girl from, all I kept thinking is, I'm a wee girl from Derry. <laughs> People will not believe this happened. <laughs> so many things happened like that though. And she's sitting feeding me glasses of red, like a, like a goblet of red wine. My friend Amy's sitting here, my friend, other friend Rachel's sitting there going, what the fuck? Kid Rock is sitting opposite me, right? Giving me daggers. <laughs> he wants to kill me. And every time I try to play the guitar, she's feeding me wine. He's looking at me. And then she turns around, thinking that she's being quiet, right? Like whispering, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Meet me up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm all, your man's going to kill me. I know. I'm not going to. I'm all, what the fuck? We will let oh, the world think. Did you go up that no, car? Or, or no, not? I did not. Yeah, no, did not. I did not. No, you did not. No. You did not. She was a lovely girl, though. She not was... not at all what you would imagine. Yeah. She's a very smart, like, oh, incredible, incredible girl. And they, that, you, you, girl. you brought that up a few times. People that like that like are nice around. Oh, don't believe up. anything. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's all fantasy. None of that's real. Yeah. She's yeah. A, she was a very, like, he, he was a lovely, just, down the earth, cool, really humble man. Yeah, and I mean, Olivia Newton John is dote, is, is absolute no, dote. And did you belt out a wee song with her? No, but no. she was very, very supportive and uh, loved my stuff. Yeah. And I was like, and my one of my other best friends over there, Amy or um, Erica Brockhart, it was, was her idol, right? She didn't know she was going to be at one of my gigs. And I was like, Erica, I'm all over. I want, to meet, want you to meet a friend of mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> she, she nearly fainted. That was my funny. I thought, sorry, Olivia. Sorry about that. And she it's is, so funny. Uh, See, to me, they're just people. Yeah, but I that's the best way to treat I, Because people are people. And, and that's you, why people w- wanted to be my friend. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care what you do. Yeah, and so uh, you put, right, the album was put out, at, <laughs> uh, as I say, and uh, lockdown happened. Mm. Now, you switched play uh, um, pretty quick. Uh, you, because uh, you were, we was, had a wee chat earlier you know, on, you were saying about like, um, by going online, mm. um, you've actually started to get uh, viewers from all over the, mm-hmm. the, the world coming Australia, in. Australia, America, Europe, everywhere. Now, Japan. So that's amazing. And oh. the, in the past, you would have had to sort of hit the road and, mm. uh, you know, get to these people and in, in, in their venues Absolutely. or whatever. Uh, so the way you sounded was that, uh, like, you'd be doing a lot of them. And uh, I know you had a campaign to raise for your van. Uh, so uh, that uh, um, you, you had a... Just playing, just yeah. singing and having a tip jar. Yeah. And just whatever, anything that came in that tip jar was going straight into the van. Yeah. And I was able to buy a big van and get it converted. There you go. Oh. And it showed the love out there with people. Oh. Yeah. And but it was so genuine. I didn't want, I didn't want millions. Of, I just wanted enough to. To do what you had uh, asked to do. To go on the road yeah. with my dogs. Because I, I can't go anywhere. I wouldn't leave my dogs with anybody. Yeah. yeah. And I haven't gone on holiday for nine years. So I'm not going to go now. Yeah. They so come with me. Or I'm not to. going. And you have four? I have two. Two. Did you not have more or not? Uh, or maybe I seen your pictures up and maybe you had them in the, you know. The, Bubba you know, and Dolly. Maybe you were adopting. Oh, they're probably, probably through the rescues. Uh, probably, yeah, aye. That yeah. would have been, I always, I'm always promoting the page, Facebook yeah, or yeah, Friends yeah. of Rescue, so. Yeah. And, and, no, Bubba no, and Dolly. And that's daddy. Look, I mean, so how is it then from now for you? What's the plans? Uh, I know that the album, uh, there's no sense, you're always writing anyway. Mm. Uh, and uh, so what's the plans with the, uh, uh, at the minute online and you're saying it's going good is that something I know you've maybe set one up for tonight and we've probably went over the time have we no no I did one last night it was oh, great crack that was great right right. crack I was thinking you'd be sprinting out there to oh do the online God. one I'll buck it there oh, mate. Uh, and George from Atlanta <laughs> <laughs> coming in hey hey Joni hey hi hey, it's a long time since I've seen you <laughs> yeah man and, uh, so People from Europe, people from the USA, people from Australia, people from all around the world, uh, uh, and people in this room. Absolutely. Uh, and yourself, I would like to say uh, thank you very much. I know I notes here, I usually have. <laughs> I don't uh, think you've and, looked at them. I don't think I looked at them. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know really if I left anything out or anything should be left Daddy, out. Daddy, we'll do this again. Uh, we'll do this we'll again. We'll do this again, is right. Uh, there's a documentary out there for people out there, the first Noella. That's that it. People yep. can uh, take a look at. I magically just found that they're just floating in the <laughs> universe, floating, <laughs> in the, uh, floating in the, in the universe. And uh, <laughs> so the gig earlier on, we usually say like uh, we go over to the other side and then yep. we go live. But you were alive and uh, we're in here. Uh, as I say, we can't hug now because no, uh, we're trying to do all these and we have all these weird claps. But what we will do, we'll throw a distant hug up. We'll stand up oh. and we'll throw a distant hug and we'll catch it. And what we'll say <laughs> is this will be out soon. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you so everybody much. everybody that's working on uh, this on behalf of us tonight. And thank you for traveling down the well and keep in touch Absolutely. whenever uh, all's happening. Hopefully when all opens up again, we'll get you down to do a gig and, and we can we can work our magic from there and anything's happening. Feel free to throw a pigeon at us, uh, whatever, whatever needs to be. So thank you very much. Give God yourself bless. a round of applause. Thank Take you, care. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Small but massive. Yeah. <laughs>